George Hickman, Tiger Boy Ty, head coach. Always good to have you on the show, man. It seems like I've known you for 10, 15 years, but you're still new to the game. Do you still do you feel like you're new to the game, or do you feel like you've been putting in the time to where you should be getting some recognition by now? Uh, yeah, I'm still, man. I'm I'm a young coach. I'm still I'm still learning. I'm I'm uh like I think I've been around now. I think like my brother and I, and uh, obviously Tiger Muay Thai, you know, giving us the opportunity and stuff of. Uh, we're starting to get some traction, um, but I think that uh, I'm still, yeah, man, I'm young in the game, and you know, I have uh, big goals and aspirations, and you know, I want to, I want to take the team of people that I have, and you know, our gym's a little bit different, but uh, you know, I want to build onto it. But I, I'm humbled all the time, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I learn from everybody, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still young, man. I'm. I'm in no rush to – I don't care about, like, having notoriety and stuff. Like, of course, I have goals and stuff. But the the most important thing for me is uh, to help my fighters succeed, uh, the ones that I that I do help and I help train and uh, the ones that are here at Tiger. And, you know, anybody that's coming to, to represent t Tiger and I have or my brother or any of our other coaching staff that we have, which we have a lot of great coaches at Tiger, you know, our main goal is to – you know, to get those people into fights and uh, get them to the fight well prepared so that they can have a good performance and they get in there and they come out safely and, uh, you know, they get wins because at the end of the day, that's a, a big part of it. Throughout the years, you know, you've had a lot of influences and you've had a you have great connections throughout the MMA community. Who are some of the coaches that you you talk to, you know, whenever you get a chance and and kind of soak up the knowledge from them? Uh, it's funny you say that. Uh, I'm, you know, when I travel and stuff and I go to these different events, I'm, uh, I talk to a few coaches that I know, uh, or that I meet through, you know, uh, managers or stuff that I have relationships with. Uh, but I would say pretty easily that, uh, you know, we have a great, uh, relationship, my brother and I, as well as all the, you know, Tiger and the coaches, at Tiger uh, with City Kickboxing through a lot of the fighters that, you know, train under Eugene Behrman and their team there at City Kickboxing and that are now, uh, that used to be fighters at Tiger, but are, you know, are back home like Brad Riddell, Kai Carr of France and, and Dan Hooker, you know, to, to be straightforward. Um, so I've known, I know all those guys. Uh, I've known Eugene for, for a while now since I've been out here. Um, but last week, uh, at UFC Auckland was the first time that I've been in New Zealand and uh, is the first time that I've you know really spent like an in-depth amount of time with him not that it was that much but uh, he's definitely a guy that um, is uh, you can't deny the things that he's done in the last three or four years uh, in MMA with his team and uh, I've learned a lot not just about coaching and um, not about technique, but I've just, I've learned a lot in general, you know, of the, the way that thing, he does things there and um, the way that he, just a lot of stuff, man. It's like nothing in particular, but he's definitely, I would say, if there was one, one person that I speak to and, and I try to gain knowledge from, it would be him. Uh, and, you know, he's, I, I'm lucky. I'm not there, but my brother's there. So my brother goes there and I always tell him, hey, when you go, you know, take notes, learn what you can. And, and, you know, obviously he brings that stuff back to not only to myself, but, uh, to the rest of our team as well. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a great relationship that we have with city kickboxing, not only city kickboxing, but, uh, also, um, uh, freestyle fighting gym, uh, and, and Australia, whereas, which is Alex Volkanovsky's home gym. Um, uh, it's funny cause I just was talking to his head coach, Joe Lopez earlier, uh, we were, he shot me a message and we were talking back and forth because, um, you know, I saw him over the weekend or last week as well. So it's uh, I feel very fortunate to, you know, to have a great relationship with uh, those two gyms. Uh, and it's it's just kind of funny how, you know, like all those years ago, Volt came out here at the same time and Brad was the kickboxing coach and Kai and Dan came out here and trained with us and uh, how – Really, last weekend, uh, other than the result that I had with, uh, you know, my fighter, uh, it was a great, great week uh, to spend with all of those guys because it really, like, you know, I, I, I messaged Eugene yesterday and I just said, hey, man, thanks for the hospitality for, you know, for Loma and myself 
and it really felt great to uh, to be able to go to another country and feel like I was at home. Before we get into last weekend in New Zealand, I wanted to go back to 2014 when you and Volkanovski were trying out for the Tiger Muay Thai team and you guys actually had to compete against each other in a grappling match. And, and could you explain to me what happened in that in that match? Uh, it's funny you say that. I was just... He's, man, Alex is, he's, I can say with everything in, in my body that he is probably one of two of the nicest people I've ever met in my entire life. He's just a great guy, but uh, I love giving him shit, and obviously he gives it back to me, but I was talking about that uh, last week when I was with him. Um, yeah, we just, we were both uh, in the tryouts, and um, they had a, I think it was called like the Song Crown Scramble or something. It was at the end of the tryouts and uh, we were in the finals against each other. We both had to go against like a bunch of like Russians and like like really tough guys, but we ended up meeting in the finals and my BJJ has never been like, I think it's better for MMA than it is for like actually submitting people. So I didn't, like I didn't have one submission the whole entire time. I think he submitted almost everybody that he went against until he got to me. And uh, literally it was like a takedown wrestling match. And that's that's how it was the whole, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of grappling on the ground. So who won? I did. I did. <laughs> so I, I, was, I was giving him shit with all the guys the other day. I said, listen, you know what? I haven't fought in over three years, but I said, damn it, Alex, if I want to come out of retirement, it's going to be, I'm going straight to the title shot. I said, just off of my, my credentials before of, of beating you in the, in the, in the uh, BJJ competition. But uh, yeah, we had a good laugh, man. It was, it was good to see him and uh, just, again, all the boys. And, and Alex is a great guy. He's, uh, you know, he's taking photos with everybody. I, I tell you what, I have a lot of respect for, obviously I've had a lot of respect because Alex winning the belt is uh, it's something that we all knew was going to happen. I think the rest of the world kind of was like, who's this guy? But, you know, I've trained with that guy in the trenches day in and day out when he was at Tiger full time. And he still comes back and I train with him some. Um, but every single fight that he had before getting to the belt, I never, I never once second guessed him at all. And uh, I'm just, I'm really, I'm happy for him and I'm, I'm very, very proud of him and, uh, and, you know, he's a great friend as well. But, uh, yeah, I, as I was going to say, him and uh, Israel, man, like once you get to that status, especially where Israel's at, and I think Alex is on his way, is, man, that's, um, that is like next level, like, like famous. And I think a lot of like normal people who aren't around that kind of stuff or around those people a lot, you don't including myself, you know, like when they come here, it's, you know, like hanging out with the boys, but that was like before Alex was, you know, the champion. And now I give it to them. I, I tip my hat to them because it is, um, it's just constantly like people want to take photos with you and you just never have time to yourself. You know, like I talked to Israel a couple of times while I was there and, you know, and I just, I didn't even want to like, you know, when he said hello to me and we like hugged it out and stuff, I didn't even want to like take the man's time up because everybody's trying to get his time. So I just was like, try to keep it short and sweet, you know, like they, um, those guys have to deal with, with a lot of, a lot of stuff. And I, I can't imagine how that must be, especially having like a family like Alex and stuff and being with your wife and your kids and people constantly wanting to take photos with you. And, um, it's, a it's definitely a life changing thing that I, from what I saw, but, uh, they obviously are, you know, handle it very well. Definitely. Now, UFC New, Z uh, New Zealand, right? Um, or UFC Auckland, Loma. She she's a she's a fighter that you've pretty much groomed from day one. You know she had that extensive Muay Thai background, but for MMA, you brought her in with no fights, right? She didn't have any fights when you when she came to Tiger. She never. <laughs> she, she she never, never even. Yeah. She had never trained. She just called uh, the other lady Francis up that helps manage mm -hmm. her and. Or her mom did and said, hey, Loma wants to fight MMA. Uh, so when she got to Tiger, she had no training whatsoever. So in fast forward, you know, you get you train her, you, you have her fight uh, a couple times on the regional scene. She goes to Japan. She fights in Invicta. She gets signed to the UFC, I believe, what, five fights in? Uh, I think, no, I think she was three and one. Okay, four fights in, right? Yeah, 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 I think she was three and one, if if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, 
Yeah, it was she when she signed to the UFC. It was literally just like I think the week that she signed. Um, I think that I had like a memory on Facebook or something come up where it was like had been just two years since she had been training. So it was very fast. Yeah, it was very mm-hmm. fast. So she goes into Singapore. She gets the win. Uh, it was a split decision, but most people that watch that fight, they know that that was not a split decision. That was a unanimous decision yeah. win, which was weird because the fight in Auckland, it was a unanimous de- decision the opposite way, but a lot of people felt like it was a closer fight. You know, break down that fight and, and what you felt about Loma's performance. Uh, I think that... Uh, as her coach and knowing her as well as I do, um, I think that she did not perform to her full potential. And that's, you know, she knows that. It, like anyone who's close to her, like she performed good, you know? Like like I told her afterwards, I just said, Loma, you know, that girl's fought in 11 months. She has more fights than you have MMA fights. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but I think, she made a lot of mistakes. She did a lot of good things. I think, like, when she was on the ground and, uh, you know, she was in the triangle and stuff, the way that she fought it. And um, I think that was – she did a great job of getting out of it and staying composed, um, which was a great thing that she did. And she also did some things that, uh, you know, that we have to work on. Um, but, again, it's this is also new to her. I thought it was a very close fight. Uh, I thought she definitely won the third round. Uh, I thought that the second round, uh, I believe, could have been a toss-up. Uh, and I, I think that, you know, her moving backwards uh, and spending a bit too much time on the cage is what, you know, probably cost her the fight. Um, but I had a lot of people message me and say that they thought she won the fight. But again, like, I mean, think about judging an MMA right now. It's such a hot topic of of, you know, what is the criteria, what are the judges looking at, you know, what what scores, what doesn't score. And um, it's, you know, one judge may see it one way and one one judge sees it another. And that's unfortunately the, you know, the way that it is right now. Hopefully there's some, you know, it gets better. I don't think it'll ever be perfect. But I think, you know, there can be some things to, some steps taken to, to better MMA judging as a whole. Um, but it was a close fight, you know, and I'm, obviously I'm, I'm upset that she didn't win, uh, but I'm not angry about it, you know? Like, it is what it is. So, But I told her, you know, you've been doing this for two years, and you're in the UFC already. These other girls that you're going against, number one, they're going to be from here on out until she gets bigger than what she is already. They're always going to be bigger than her, and they're all going to have more experience than her. I guarantee every girl that she fights will have from here on out will have more experience than her because every girl that she's fought until this point has had more experience than her. Um, but she's, um, and that's, I'm not making excuses for it. It just, that's what it is. And, uh, but I think she can beat all those girls. I think she fights Angela Hill again. I think she beats her for sure. And the short amount of time that she's been training, man, she's just, I can't say enough good things about her. She's a, you know, I care about her as if she's my own family. And I know that every other coach at Tiger does because it hasn't just been me. You know, it's been a, a, a complete team effort of, of of everybody at Tiger that's helped her. Uh, I'm lucky that I have, you know, a lot of good other coaches that help out with her and, and with the rest of the team. So um, I think I told her, you know, when, when, when the fight was over and she got out of the hospital, I said, you can go home for two weeks and then, you know, you need to get back to Phuket and, and we need to pick off, pick up where we left off at. And, uh, and correct the things that we did wrong in the fight. So uh, it was um, obviously not the performance we wanted, uh, but it is what it is. For her, you know, since she is so young and she's still developing, do you uh, take some time from after this fight? You know, maybe take about six months, you know, a little bit more time to kind of develop a little bit more, maybe put on some more size or, you know, work on some aspects of her game? Or do you feel like, you know, you could, you could take a fight. It doesn't matter. You could just, you know, roll with uh, what you have right now. Uh, you know, I'll be speaking to her her manager and whatnot in the next mm-hmm. week uh, about what we're going to do next. But uh, the great thing about her is she listens. Man, she's she's from Muay Thai, and, and Muay Thai in Thailand is, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny because she's not used to, like, having choices of what she wants to do. It's just this is what you're going to do. This is when you're going to train. This is what you're going to train. And that's it. And then there's not a lot of, 
uh, a lot of for actual Thai athletes until they're at like this the status of someone like Sancha say I mean and that's not very many so it's um they're told what to do and it's it's similar like she, it's not like that with her and me but um but still like you know it's I tell her what to do when to do it and how to do it and, and the rest of her team and the management team and uh, we all have our best interests at hand so I, I'll speak to her management team and uh we'll figure out what's next next but I I think that, you know, with the right opponent, uh, we take a little bit of time, but not too much time. I don't want her to, because again, she, you know, she's young. She needs to fight. She needs, number one, she, you know, she, where she comes from, she needs to fight to, to feed her family. It's mm -hmm. over here. Fighting is not like it is in the West where it's like, Hey, you know, we want to go compete. And that's, that's what the great thing about it is. But here, like Loma doesn't fight because she wanted to start fighting. Like I did after graduating college, she fights because she literally, has to put food on the table for her family. And uh, so she needs to fight in that sense. But at the same time, you know, we have to make sure that she's well prepared and that she's she's improving and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I would assume that, you know, three or four months, five months, and she'll be back in there. Like as a preference, do you would you like to put that Hannah Goldie fight back together? Uh, to me, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would be open to that. Uh, I, again, I have to speak to her manager and usually, you know, they give me a couple of options or, you know, what do you think about this or what do you think about that? And, and, and we go from there. Um, but yeah, like you said, man, I, you know, I want to put a little bit, not put like where she, she can't move and stuff, but like, just keep getting her stronger and faster. And she's bro, she's tired. You know, she's never lifted weights before. And, and from her last fight to this fight, she made tons of gains, uh, as far as her strength, like Loma's a smaller girl but she's very strong for her size. And I think people really underestimate that. Um, so when she gets back here, she'll be right back uh, working with her strength coach, Andrew Wood. Um, and yeah, it's, it's six. I mean, I'm excited for her future, you know, like how many girl, how many fighters get in there and fight someone like Angela Hill, like their first or second fight, you know, that's, that's no easy task. And even though she lost, she did a lot of great things and, you know, I think she's right there to, to beat girls of that caliber. Well, yeah, that, that fight, you know, there, it was all, there was, it, there was no risk to be honest with you. It's like you, you win that catapults you, you know, right. you lose, it just pretty much keeps you where you're at. Right. And, uh, right. and that's the position she's at right now. So, yeah. So she has a lot of time to develop and uh, a lot of people support her. You know, even Dana White was like, you need to watch this girl. So, you know, that's kind yeah. of nice to have. Yeah, that was cool to uh, to see that. Um, and, yeah, I think a lot of people are, like, interested in Loma because of her, because of how high caliber Muay Thai she is and, um, and her story of being from where she's from. And, uh, and, and yeah, her whole journey is it's pretty cool uh, in MMA. And, yeah, like you said, uh, you know, once – because her opponent changed to Angela Hill. I think it was like just at two weeks out from the fight. And of course, you know, I could have been like, Hey, no, you know, we're not going to fight this girl. You're not ready for that yet. But in right away, when I, I saw it was her, I said, yeah, let's, let's do this. And I would do that again tomorrow if it was the same scenario, you know, like, because I was that confident that she could win and she almost did, but she didn't. So it is what it is, man. It's, um, I'm just excited for it. You know, it, again, it sucks that, you know, she lost and, and whatnot, but she, I think she'll learn a lot of valuable lessons from this loss. Now moving on, Khalil, Khalil Roundtree, you know, he's down there getting ready for his next fight. You know, he put up a weird post about like, this is going to be his last fight. You know, a lot of people are probably wondering about that. You know, Khalil, he's not really, you know, a, a guy that does a lot of interviews or anything like that. So it's kind of a cryptic message. Could you kind of delve into that cryptic message for us? Uh, I think, <laughs> yeah, I can dive into it. I read the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't really talk to him that much about it. Khalil's, man, Khalil's, uh, he's his own person. And that's that's why, like, I'm his coach and stuff. But uh, that's why I really respect him as of who he is. You know, like, MMA is not his identity. He's got other things in his life that, he, that he's passionate about and that he has going on. He's good at fighting. Um, and, yeah, I mean, if, if that if this is his last fight, because, honestly, I, I don't really know. Um, if it is his last fight, okay. 
you know, like it is what it is. Uh, of course, you know, I'm going to tell him that, you know, he has a lot of potential to continue to, to, to keep going and, uh, doing well. But if that's what he wants to do, you know, that's, I guess we'll cross that bridge when it, when it gets there, you know, after this fight. And, uh, I think this is a great fight for him, but, um, yeah, I, I, th that would be a question you would have to ask him. I'll ask him if he wants to to come on the show, and you can you can speak to him. Definitely, definitely. Now the matchup, you know, he's taking on Sam Alvey, which is a a good matchup, I think, for for Khalil. You know, it's like a perfect matchup for him. What do you think about I it? I agree with you a hundred percent. I think it's a great matchup. How do you see this playing out? Uh, I think I think that. I think we all know what Khalil does and what he's good at. Um, and I, I think uh, Alvi's, you know, game to, to keep it standing as well. Um, but at the same time that I say that, uh, I think that once people feel the power that Khalil possesses, uh, it can change things very quickly. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he did shoot and try to take him down because Kutalaba, he in every fight that I watched, you know, he would shoot some, but later in rounds or later in the fight. Um, and he shot pretty quickly on Khalil. So, uh, I, but I, again, I think it's, it's a, it's a, it's a great matchup for him. Uh, so I'm excited about it. In, in that Kutalaba fight, Khalil during a takedown, he, he injured himself or he got injured, right? His leg or something. Is that yeah, what happened? Yeah, he hurt his yeah, he. I think he kicked him. If I, I and I'm not a hundred percent sure. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure he threw a kick or something. And in in the midst of like defending the takedown, I think he pulled his hamstring or something like that. Um, oh. And I, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, he he definitely got injured, uh, as he told me afterwards. And once he got taken down, it, he didn't do that. He couldn't do that much. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's uh. But, hey, this matchup coming up is going to be a fun fight. I think they did a good matchmaking in this one, man. And plus, both guys, they need to get a win. So, it's... Uh, yeah, I think... I agree. Bang it out. Yeah. They're going to bang uh, it out. I'm really excited for this fight for him. It's, um, he's he's pretty focused for this. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited. All right. Another uh, topic I wanted to discuss with you is that coach, Diego Sanchez's coach, Joshua Fabia... Um, a lot of guys in the UFC's worked with him, or they've not really worked with him, but they've been around him. But he's only Diego's coach. You know, what do you think about him? You know, and uh, the what you've seen about him so far? Because he's done a lot of interviews. Uh, yeah, I've watched a lot of them. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not really my my cup of tea. Kind of like how just I don't. I mean, I don't really know to be honest. Like. I've read a lot of the stuff online and st like, you know, looking at Twitter and stuff, but, uh, it's, it's kind of funny. It, it really is like, just like listen to the interviews and stuff. Uh, I, I was in the room the other day in Auckland and somebody was playing the interview and I heard some of the stuff. Uh, and it's, it's just weird. It's very weird to me. Like the whole like situation. Um, yeah, if that works for Diego, then, because I heard him, like, saying, like, some stats or maybe not statistics, but, like, things of what, you know, what he's done better since, what uh, Diego has done better since, you know, he started working with him. Yeah, it's um, it's just very, very strange that, you know, he would go from, like, the coaches that he had or the, like, the gym that he was at. And, and but at, when you're at a gym like that size... Like, Tiger's a big gym, but I don't think we have as many, like, people that are, like, our fighters uh, as, like, that gym would have. I don't know that for sure. Maybe he felt like he got lost in the shuffle and that's, you know, what he needed or whatever. But, yeah, it's um, it's just funny that, like, the whole situation to me is weird. And, and it's kind of, like, it's funny, like, hearing him speak out now because he said, I heard at one point he just said, like, he had... Uh, not said anything for like a year or something, but now he was like lashing out or whatever to give his, his, uh, take on things. But yeah, it's, um, whatever. If he keeps them, like I can keep listening to these interviews and, you know, having a good crack. So, well, if you think about it, coaches after something like that happens, they don't usually go on and 
do like a media tour. He's been doing a media tour. He's like Ariel, Luke Thomas. These are the biggest yeah. shows in MMA. You know, usually coaches wouldn't do that. They would kind of keep quiet and, you know, try yeah. to stay out the media. So it is kind of weird. Course. Yeah, those guys, they want to have him on, I would assume, because mm -hmm. like, you know, like it's, he, that guy's like the talk of the MMA world right now. Yeah. Uh, but when I was like listening to some of it, it's just like, he was like getting angry and then like, why haven't you done your research and like would plug his website. And I just, yeah, I just thought he was like talking too much about his like website or whatever. <laughs> well, you know, the, throughout the years we've had some weird characters, uh, unusual characters come through, you know, you've had the Steven Seagal come, you remember Steven Seagal would come and say that he <laughs> yeah. was teaching people how to fight. And then, uh, you had, uh, eat, eat, what did it, Ida, Portal, Portal, the guy with the movement, yeah. movement guy. Everybody was yeah. Cutting about and then after that. McGregor had him, you know, and, 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 and I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of other guys that we, they didn't really get famous, you know, but this guy, he's, he's, he's doing something for Diego. You know what I mean? Like Diego believes in it and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, good but, for him. Yeah. That's like, if that's what he think he thinks he needs is, you know, as long as, Hopefully his well-being is like okay, and he's prepared when he gets in there to fight. Then, uh, you know, good on him. But if not, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's just very weird. Like the whole thing is very weird. It is. Now, for you, this is the beginning of the year. Of course, you have Loma, and then you have Khalil. Uh, who are the other guys that are coming up in the next couple months, or girls that are fighting? And and do you do you have any like? projects going on outside of uh coaching or anything i'm um, just right now like really focused on coaching and obviously it's my job uh but um we have b win she's fighting uh in one championship soon uh but it's muay thai i believe uh so she's coming up and then khalil and those are the only two that i believe right now uh in the next month that we have fighting um but it's, yeah, it's, man, we stay busy. We stay busy uh, at Tiger, so. I've known you for a long time, you know what I mean? And and i known you when you were a fighter, a fighter and a coach. And then you transitioned yeah. to full-time coach. And, that was uh, a long time ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. And now you have a family. You have a child. So do you, are you are you real comfortable in your life, you know, like coach and, like, take care of your family and that's the life you you love to live and that's kind of like what you you're you're content you know what i mean with the this lifestyle i wouldn't say that i i would say that i'm very like obviously my family is the most important thing in my life um and then my work um would be a, a close second <laughs> uh but no as far as like content like i'm very happy with what i'm doing um but you know uh, I want to continue to build uh, the brand with my brother, the Hickman brothers, and, and continue to to have that continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger every year. Um, and I think we're in the, the right direction. Um, I want to continue to help, you know, obviously with Tiger, uh, continue to, to continue to make the gym bigger and, and get more recognition and have more fighters and have more, uh, you know, people fighting in bigger fights and, you know, hopefully we get some champions and, you know, Volkanovski is, you know, it's not a product of me or from anything, but it, you know, he's represented Tiger before when he was fighting and, uh, we still help him uh, a good bit. Uh, I would say my brother more so than myself for sure. Um, but yeah, just continue to build my brand and, uh, my brother's brand and, and, and continue to, to elevate, uh, Tiger Muay Thai and, and get it to the next level. One last thing before, you know, I let you go is when you go around into events and stuff, do you run into people? Is it kind of weird that people recognize you, you know, that you've never met before, that never been to Thailand? And they're like, oh, the Hitman Brothers, you know, what I mean, because I see the shirts all over the place. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's 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 a bit. Yeah, it, it is. It's a little bit different than, you know, what I'm used to, like when random, like I'm in Philippines and people are like, want to take a photo or something like that. But uh, like, we're not famous or anything like that. But through the platform of Tiger, a lot of people, you know, have access to see the coaches at Tiger and through the tryouts and, and different, you know, the Instagram and things like that. 
So yeah, we do, or like we get messages from you know people who want shirts and stuff abroad, which we send out. Um, so that is it's cool. It's it's cool just to like you know for people. Uh, I think that if that's happening, then uh, you know the coaching staff at Tiger is doing something right. So uh, yeah, that is cool, and it's 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 happened more often recently. So um, you know if that helps the gym and. and and the fighters and yeah it's cool yeah your brother getting that embedded love is pretty good that embedded yeah know, getting on that is huge my brother is he's all over the place man he's yeah. uh <laughs> he's uh takes off this weekend i believe for uh israel's fight next week in uh, las vegas mm-hmm. which is cool it's just man it's uh it's yeah things of like since i met you and since I stopped fighting and started coaching, things have definitely, uh, and my brother coming over and, you know, the team of coaches that we have now at Tiger Muay Thai is, um, it's, uh, I think we're in a good place and we're moving in the right direction. All right. With that, man, appreciate it, man. Of course, always, every time it's a good chat and, uh, yeah, man, uh, hope, you know, good fortune in 2020, 2021, 2030, man, whatever how long you do it man good luck to it and and keep it running man thank you brother i appreciate it